Hello and welcome to this little lesson on how to play uh, a bass riff to go with your tubular bells main riff. Um, there are two versions of this that you can try. One that's very very simple and one that's uh, a little bit trickier. So let's do the, the tricky one first because that's the, the more interesting one and if you can't manage that you can always jump down and do the easy one. So what I'm going to do first is just sort of demonstrate it. I'm going to run the, the, uh, the video of me playing it um, on the piano, you can't see it but you can hear it. It sounds great. Uh, just to refresh your memory, we have uh, three bars in which we count seven and one bar in which we count nine. So if you look at the sheet, you'll see the counting running along the top there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it is that kind of speed that you're counting. And you play the open A on the counts of one and three, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you play the open A once again on uh, the counts of seven. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Now, don't forget, when you go into the next bar, there's not a gap, you're straight in. And on the next bar of seven on beat three, you could do this quick hammer on, two A to three A, they open D on beat four, two D on beat five, open D on beat six, and three A on beat seven. So, that's the speed. And probably use fingers 1 and 2 on the hammer on, 2A, 3A, finger 1 on 2D, finger 2 on 3A and you get to it. So you've got... Picking wise, I think the first bike could do all in downstrokes. And this bit, probably a little bit of cross picking is not a bad idea there. Now that goes straight into... Only bar of seven, so you're straight into the next bar of seven. And what you've got there are octave G's. You've got the third fret of the E string, bass E string, that's a low G, beats one and three, and then on beat seven you play 5D, which is the octave higher. And so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, and then in the last bar, on beat four, you play open D, beat six, you play 3A, beat seven, you play 2A. Beat H, you play 3E, and beat 9 is a gap. So let's play the whole riff, you've got this. that would be played on a bass guitar which would be tuned an octave below this uh, but it still sounds pretty good let's just run it with a track once more let's go from the beginning let's go. let the first one go by and then you get your, your, your feel and your bearings a bit that way better I, I damp it at the bridge so I put my hand over the bridge saddle and that means that the strings instead of ringing clearly like that they sound kind of muffly which just sounds quite nice. And that's very similar to the actual bass line on the record I've simplified it a little bit but it still sounds pretty good. Having said all that that's pretty tricky isn't it? If you want a, a very easy version of that, look at the, the um, lower down the page which says easy bass part and you've got just 
two notes though. Open A, played three times in bar one, and three E, played three times in bar three, and always on the same beats, one, three, and seven. Let me just demonstrate that for you. That's obviously a lot easier. Not so exciting. Again, we'll let one go by. Here it comes. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 eight, nine. And practically impossible to count. You basically kind of need to feel it, I think, um, uh, to get it right. Trying to count it is a bit of a nightmare. So there's a bit of fun for you. I suggest you try and play along with my uh, piano video uh, so that you get your bearings and see if you can sort of slot it in with that. It's, it's quite tricky but quite fun.